As someone who's devoted their entire work life to studying supermassive black holes, the question I get asked most often by people is what's inside a black hole? Now the short answer to that question is we don't know. <laughs> and under our current understanding of the laws of physics, we don't think we'll ever know. Well, that's not a very satisfying answer, is it? So here is our best ideas for what we think is going on inside a black hole. Oh, and before I forget, my book, Space 10 Things You Should Know, is now out in Korean for all of those of you who speak Korean. I'll link it in the video description down below. To kick us off though, we need to clarify a common misconception about black holes, and that is they're not holes. It is not something you could physically fall into like a hole. <laughs> you need to start picturing them in 3D, just like a star for example, because after all it's stars that form black holes when they run out of fuel and die and go supernova. It's just that unlike a star, which we actually detect light coming off them, a black hole, we don't get any light from them because they're so dense and their gravity so strong that not even light traveling at 300 million meters per second can escape the pull of a black hole's gravity. So just like here on Earth, I am physically not strong enough to throw a ball up fast enough for it to have enough energy to escape Earth's gravity. You would actually have to be going at 11 kilometers a second to do that, which is what rockets do when we launch them into space, and that's something we call the escape velocity. And for a black hole, the escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. And under our current understanding of the laws of physics, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light. It's like a universal speed limit. So anything that gets too close to a black hole essentially becomes part of the black hole. It adds to its mass. But this is the crucial bit distance. It's anything that gets too close to a black hole. Black holes are not just endless hoovers sucking everything in over time. Most stuff actually just orbits black holes. So like the Earth orbits the Sun, the Sun also orbits the center of the Milky Way where there just happens to be a supermassive black hole about four million times more massive than the Sun. But just like how Earth isn't falling into the sun because of the sun's gravity, the sun isn't falling into the black hole at the center of the Milky Way because it's 24,000 trillion kilometers away from it. It's only when something comes close to what we call the event horizon around a black hole that it would become a cropper. This is the region around the black hole that you'd have to be traveling fast in the speed of light to escape the pull of gravity. So remember, we're thinking about black holes as three dimensional. So this is like a sphere around the black hole where we no longer get any light from. The black hole at the center of the Milky Way, for example, is four million times the mass of the sun, but its event horizon is only 24 million kilometers in diameter. That's about 16% of the distance from the Earth to the Sun. Compare that to the size of the galaxy at 100,000 light years across, and it's absolutely tiny. Massive, yeah, but tiny. But because we don't get any light from it, we don't get any information from inside this event horizon. This is what we mean when we talk about inside a black hole. We're talking about inside this 3D sphere, this visible boundary of the event horizon around a black hole. Most of the information we get about the universe comes in the form of light. It's only recently that we've been able to get information in the form of gravitational waves instead. Because we don't get light from the black hole, we can't figure out what's going on inside it. There's nothing to, to reflect light back at us or emit light or block light or absorb light. Something that tells us that something of some form is there. We don't get any of that information from it. So the event horizon really is where our knowledge Ends. And so as we start to contemplate what's inside that event horizon or inside a black hole, we move from scientific fact to unproven scientific hypotheses. So ideas that are still motivated by the science and all of the previous observations that we have, you know, that are just plucked out of thin air, but we don't have any observational evidence or an experiment that we can do to prove either way which is the right idea. So let's go through some of these ideas. Option one would be that inside the event horizon is a singularity. 
So our best theory for how gravity works is Einstein's theory of general relativity, mass, curves, space, time. And that's how we describe it mathematically at least. Now, when he published this back in 1915, people quickly realized that if you work through all of the maths and you go through all of the equations of general relativity, one of the solutions that you get for those equations is something that is so dense that its escape velocity is greater than the speed of light. Essentially an infinitely dense point, a mathematician's worst nightmare dividing by zero. And so people, even Einstein himself, dismissed that as unphysical, unrealistic, and tried to come up with explanations for why that wouldn't necessarily happen in the real universe. But then of course, Hawking and Penrose came along in the 60s and actually showed mathematically that it would naturally happen. And then in the late 20th century, we actually started to find and observe real black holes in the universe. So one option is, as the maths predicts, that the center of our 3D sphere of this event horizon is a singularity, an infinitely small point where all the matter, all the mass in a black hole has been squished down until it's infinitely dense. Option two is that a black hole is made of an unknown exotic form of matter. Black holes are made when stars die. A supernova is essentially the only process that we know is strong enough to crush matter down to these huge densities, right? The outside layers of the stars are thrown off and then the core of the star is crushed and crushed down. But black holes are not the only things that can be formed when a star dies. It actually depends on how massive the star is during its normal lifetime, what you get at the end of it. So a star like the sun, for example, will leave behind something called a white dwarf. Now we know what a white dwarf is made of. It's essentially the space from atoms has been squished out, leaving protons and these free floating electrons between them. It's essentially resisting its own gravity, trying to crush it downwards with these free floating electrons that refuse to be in the same space with each other. But if you've got enough mass to overcome that, you can force those protons and electrons together to become neutrons and you get what we call a neutron star. It's even denser than a white dwarf. It's heavier, but it takes takes up less space because now you've got neutrons just as closely packed as they can go, essentially arrayed in like a perfect crystal. And now that's what's resisting this crush of its own gravity inwards. But again, if you add more mass, eventually you're going to overcome that force of these neutrons resisting being crushed any further. And so it starts to get denser, dense enough that you eventually form an event horizon and you can't see what the matter has become. It could have been crushed down to this infinitely dense point, the singularities we heard about before, or there could be this new form of matter that we've never seen before, because the only place that you get it is beyond an event horizon, that's somehow able to resist the crush of gravity further, but it's dense enough to still form an event horizon. It's just that we've never been able to create any matter like that before, like in a lab, because you wouldn't want to, and we've never been able to observe it because we have this event horizon stopping us from getting any light from it to know what it could possibly be. You know, this is how I like to think of black holes, as the next stage of a star's evolution. A Raichu to a neutron star's Pikachu. We've just never seen what Raichu looks like. Or option three, something else, anything else. Einstein also said that E equals mc squared, energy and mass are equivalent. So beyond the event horizon, does all that mass just become pure energy? And if you could like peer into the event horizon, you'd just blind yourself? Or have we got some weird quantum effects going on in there that we maybe never thought about? Or is it just something else, anything else, something that we have never even thought to think about even in our wildest dreams? We can puzzle over this all day, but black holes are never going to give us a clue as to which one might be the right answer because we're never going to get any information from them. So as someone who researches black holes, you know, I've dedicated my life to figuring out as much as I possibly can about them, but I've just sort of had to resign myself to the fact that this is one thing that we'll never know, at least under our current understanding of the laws of physics anyway. But what's life without a little bit of mystery, eh? 
Before we get to the bloopers, everyone's favorite part, let's face it, I just wanna say a massive thank you to this week's video sponsor, Brilliant. Now you're probably here on my channel because you wanna learn something new about science and that's a great place to start, but if you wanna take it to the next step, you need to learn by doing. And Brilliant is a website and an app that lets you do just that, learning new concepts by solving problems yourself bit by bit. And Brilliant has something for everyone, science, maths, computer science, even coding and machine learning. They also have an astrophysics course with modules on stellar remnants, i.e. what's left behind when a star dies, and one all about black holes that actually leads you through the maths for working out the size of the event horizon of a black hole. So this would be a great thing to do to take your black hole knowledge to just that next level. So if that sounds like something you'd be up for and you want to support me and my channel, then head to brilliant.org forward slash Dr. Becky. That's D-R b-e-c-k-y and sign up completely for free plus the first 200 people that go to that link that is in the video description below will get 20 percent off an annual premium subscription which i think is wonderful thank you so much to brilliant so go forth and learn with brilliant but for now we're all those bloopers it's essentially resisting its own gravity, trying to crush it inwards with these free floating, free floating, <laughs> free floating electrons. The black hole at the center of the Milky Way, for example, is four million times the mass of the sun, but its event horizon is only 24 million kilometers. Do I sound stupid when I say only 24 million kilometers? Like astrophysically speaking, it's teeny tiny, but I realize it sounds a little bit stupid saying only 24 million kilometers. <laughs> And people, including Einstein himself, just dismissed it as unphysical or unrealistic that that could actually happen in our universe and came up with ways to explain why it wouldn't actually happen. Of course, then in the 60s, you had people like Hawkeye and Penrose who... Did I just say